Cataspora is one of the four large groupings of aquatic insects. Others would include the mayfly, the stonefly, and the midge. Caddisflies likely are familiar to everyone, whether they really know it or not. They're sometimes referred to as tent wing insects, almost like a moth. Their, their wings fold over the back of their abdomen, and typically they have fairly long antenna. The caddisfly itself passes through four different stages of life. It starts out with the egg, uh, it moves to the larva stage, then to the pupa stage, and from the pupa stage it's going to emerge as an adult. So starting with the caddis eggs, in some species the adult female is actually going to swim to the bottom of the river or lake and deposit the eggs and rise again to the surface to fly away. But some will also lay their eggs by briefly landing on the surface of the water and depositing the eggs there. Either way, the female adult caddisfly is going to lay up to 800 eggs. Now once hatched from the egg, the fly begins the larva stage. Uh, the larva will re remain larva for about 30 weeks or about seven and a half months. There are over 14,000 caddis species and they're found everywhere around the world. Various species are going to spend that larval stage uh, different from one another. Some are going to build a case around their bodies out of a variety of material that it finds in the water. So this video that you're looking at here gives you an up close look uh, at a caddis larva. In this case it's one of the species that builds and lives in a case. Here only the head is sticking out and you can see the rest of the body is actually covered in in the case it's dragging around. Other caddisflies are going to be what we call free living meaning they don't build a case um, and they'll be crawling around the bottom and swimming up and down in the water column. And then finally uh, some caddis uh, larvae are actually what are called net builders. Somewhat like a spider would do, these larvae weave a net that will serve as protection but will also catch or trap material the larvae will use as food. Just before entering the pupa stage, all caddis larvae will encase themselves in a hard shell cocoon. They'll remain in that cocoon for two to five weeks, depending on the species. If you're to pull up a rock from the bottom of a river or a stream bed, you're likely going to see what's pictured here, which is a, a whole host of caddis cocoons where the caddis pupa has emerged, leaving the empty cases behind glued to the bottom of the rock. Last of all, the caddis will chew through its hard cocoon case and rise to the water surface. It'll shed its skin, um, sometimes called a shuck, and quickly fly to the riverbank. Now the adult caddisfly lives much longer than the mayfly. Where an adult mayfly may live a day or two, a caddisfly adult can live for several weeks. The caddises will mate, uh, the adult female will deposit her eggs, and the entire st cycle is started all over again. So in your fly box, make sure that you have at least those three stages of the caddis fly, the larva, the pupa, and the adult. Uh, the elk hair caddis, for example, is a solid representation of an adult caddis fly. Um, and there are a number of patterns that can be used for the pupa or the larval stage of the, of the caddis fly. Trust me, you'll be using these an awful lot. We're going to carry on with uh, the caddis line here. We're going to do a, a caddis uh, larva. I've got a size 14 scud hook in the vise. Uh, material wise, um, I'm going to be using for thread, I'm going to use the 14 knot shear uh, in brown. I will be using some chartreuse uh, ultra wire. In small size, I'll probably I will be using actually some of this uh, Zappa Gap if I don't throw it at everybody. But um, and I'm going to use that to help secure stuff down on the vise or on the hook. And then 
uh, my last ingredient is is going to be the awesome possum um, so that will be the dubbing on this one uh, we want it a little buggy but not completely overly buggy uh, but this fly is pretty straightforward and pretty easy to tie um, we will also be um, first of all um, we're going to be putting on some 0.02 lead and to do that I'm going to start out by putting on glasses that I can actually see through I am going to actually just put a tiny little dab of the Zappic app or, or Z mint which is more or less it's just um, super glue which I presume it is because it behaves just like super glue when I touch my fingers and glue them together I'm sure nobody else has ever done that okay so we've got our zappy cap on let's um, start on our, our lead wire and we're, we're doing the lead wire just to make this this bug go down in the, the water a little bit faster so that's probably going to do me right there. Then I'm going to rock it back and forth while pu pulling down, which is the friction. Um, and it will break off right there, right where we wanted it to break off. And let's try to squish this stuff together here as well as we can. So I'm going to hold on to this back end here now, and I'm going to... pull on it until it breaks off kind of moved up on me just a hair that's about where I want that lead to be placed it's going to be right about right about there maybe a little bit further up um, sometimes I'm way too picky so we will begin after getting the lead on by um, getting our thread started and we're going to, on this particular fly, we're going to start the thread back towards the bend of the hook rather than a, up by the eye of the hook. Uh, often that's just to, you know, hold things in place, but it's also because this fly, I, I really don't want a lot of bulk in this fly, um, especially um, in its body. It's going to have some, um, but I, I don't want a really th thick and heavy body. So let's clip off our tag. And uh, from there, we're pretty much in business. So here's our chartreuse wire. Um, I don't want it on top of the lead here because I want to keep a, a really pretty tight and narrow body. Um, so anything that I add on top is just going to create more and more bulk. Um, so what I really want to do is I want to get it tied off on the side of the hook that is closest to the camera. And I'll take a few wraps on that and then actually I'll take a few more just for just for the fun of it um, I'm gonna draw that chartreuse back a, a little bit there we go so there it's not on the lead so it's not gonna create any extra bulk we're just gonna work down the the bend of the hook now and that's going to be uh, where we're going to start our body. Um, and that's why I want our ribbing there. And I will take this one a little bit deep around the, the end of this hook. Um, that's, that, that's probably good enough right there. That'll probably do me just fine. So I'm going to just let my thread dangle there as I reach over for my green dubbing which is what we're going to use for the abdomen of this with the chartreuse wire rib. And um, I, I, I'll follow my constant advice, which is less is, less is better um, when it comes to dubbing. Okay, so I've got my dubbing here in this buggy kind of awesome possum looking stuff. Bright green. I'm just going to finger dub that onto the, my thread I'm gonna pull it up a little bit but you'll notice I'm gonna keep a little bit of uh, bare thread right there and the reason for that is I want to go clear down here where I 
want this fly to start and make sure I get one good solid wrap um, right there. That's where I want the, the dubbing to start. So we'll continue to work on this, uh, working our way up the shank of the hook. And now we're getting closer to where the lead will be. And so I want it really tight through there. Um, it'll just help keep that body uh, nice, um, nice and narrow. Uh, it's really a thin kind of a body on this. And I did run out of dubbing is fine. I would rather add more dubbing to my thread than fight trying to get it off of my thread when I get too much on. So, okay, I've got that dubbed on. Um, you'll want to make sure with these wraps that you're covering up those, um, the wraps of lead. You don't want them necessarily showing through, so I'll double check and look from the side. And by tightening up your body um, when we go over the lead uh, you'll note that it's you know it, it's just kind of helping um, to just you know cover cut, cover the lead to start with um, it's giving me a tiny little taper which is about what I would like to have on this fly um, and if I use too much material where that lead is, it's already starting out with a head start uh, with thickness uh, because it's wrapped around my hook. So here we go. Let's try to stand this guy back up so you can see him better. And we're just going to pick up where we left off. Um, kind of tightening our thread as we go, or our, you know, our dubbing rope as we go. And then now we're getting closer to the eye of the hook. Um, and you'll note that it's so important. Um, it took me forever to just figure this out, but you really, you want to make sure you don't really crowd the eye of that hook. Uh, and oftentimes when you're flying diff tying different patterns, what you'll find is... Um, a lot of the materials get added right at the end of your tying the fly and if you've got not enough space you end up tying over the top of the eye of the hook or have very limited space to work but for this one here we're going to go ahead and start our ribbing uh, with a chartreuse wire uh, because it is wire i can pull on it fairly tight and i will um, on this particular pattern because i want those tight wraps to uh, kind of make that dubbing um, balloon out or uh, and it enhances the uh, segmentation that we're looking for. So I'm, I'm really looking for, uh, you know, fairly even wraps here and then pulling them fairly tight as well. So we're getting pretty close to where we're going to stop. We'll throw in a few more um, wraps here. And now we're pretty much at the eye of the hook. So um, at this point, I'm just gonna throw my thread over. So it's just gone over the top of that chartreuse. Um, I can let go of it um, at this point uh, because it's wire. So it's not gonna move anywhere on me. And we'll just clean up a little bit like so and now that we've got it to this point we can go ahead and break that um, chartreuse wire off and again we'll use the the friction I'm going to be pulling up and putting pressure pulling up while I'm rocking it back and forth the rocking back to forth is going to soften the metal and it's just going to pop off right there just like that so now we're going to uh, move on to the last material that we're going to use on this fly, and we're going to use um, whatever I can to knock everything over. I'm going to go with the awesome possum, and I'm going to go uh, straight up brown here. Um, and that's going to represent kind of the head 
uh, of this caddis fly. And I'll do the same thing here. If I don't get enough um, dubbing on here, um, that's okay. Um, I can always add a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and get this brown dubbing um, started on my thread and create myself a, a nice little dubbing rope here. Um, hopefully you can see that. So we're going to go ahead and make a few wraps right up against that green. I'm going to tighten this really tight as I go to the eye of the hook because I really want the bulk of this um, bug to be here in the back not up by the eye so by spinning it really tight I can put a very thin layer um, of dubbing there on that um, I'm actually going to put just a hair more because I do want that to be uh, if that head part to be uh, larger in diameter than the green and right now the way I have it is they're almost identical um, I'm sure it would work just fine but we're gonna go ahead and since we got a little bit of time here let's go ahead and put a little bit more Tightening it down, bringing it up around, tightening it down, bringing it up and around, just like so. Back into that green area, and then I'm going to come right back to the eye of the hook. And I still have not crowded the eye of the hook. Uh, got a nice bulbous um, head on it there. And, you know, other than that, I move fold some of this back and, and tie it down, but I'll do a little house cleaning um, after we finish this one off. So uh, we're going to go grab our, our trusty whip finisher, um, get it and put it in place, and we're just going to put a few wraps in here to build up a little head, but also to put that knot um, in my thread on my hook. So now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to cut that thread off and we're kind of free and clear at this point. Um, the fly's done uh, here but I, I, I will because it's just what I do. I'll come in and I'm going to give this one a little bit of a haircut. Not a lot but uh, some. And hopefully you are able to see I'm just trying to kind of cut out some of these uh, guard hairs that are, you know, a little bit longer. Um, this this bug does have legs, um, but they're not very big. Um, not nearly as big as what I had just left there on that fly. And I've got a tiny little bit up here on the top. And, yeah, I can do this all day. Um, but that's okay. I enjoy doing it. So, so there you have it. Um, that's the the green caddis larvae. Um, there will be other um, patterns that I'm sure I'll be filming some of those as well. But yeah, hopefully you can see here. It's got that nice green color on it. Uh, we've got the chartreuse ribbing uh, pulled tight to get that body seg seg segmentation going. And then we also have that nice, thick brown head. Um, and that finishes our fly. <music>